First, first of all, I want to thank you. I speak from Spain, so English is not my tongue language. So I'm sorry to uh, my I don't have good in English, but I want to thank uh, Sister um, Ijaleje for inviting me to this great meeting. I think everybody to to celebrate. Uh, Honorable Marcus Gave, the King's Excellency Marcus Gave is somebody who we got to thank. Thank you, my sister. And thank you to ancestors to bring me in this um, in this forum. Uh, well, I born in Equatorial Guinea, in Africa, in Central Africa. I grew up in Spain uh, with my family. Uh, well, uh, I met. Marcus Garvey and Huey Newton, Malcolm X, and uh, Sister Winnie Mandela from my mother. My mother was a member of the Free Mandela Movement. So I'm, I enjoy in the, in the African liberation, Pan-African Movement, Garveyism, Black Power, or everything you can tell you from my mother, in my aunts, who was a member of the church and part of the Free Mandela Movement and follow Willie Mandela. That was my, why, what I am the youth. And then uh, I'm, when I was uh, uh, 17, me and four brothers, uh, Tommy, Enrique, and um, Ciale, and Serafin, uh, we, was, we formed the, the chapter of New Black Panther Party in Spain. It was the times in the, in the, in the end of the 80s was the, Terrorism against the African community by skinhead Nazis. Maybe you remember that time. There was bombing church. There was bombing, killing Africans. There was uh, attacking black people in the street, mm -hmm. and we was we was tremendously impacted by somebody that you mentioned before. It was uh, the music you put uh, at the beginning. Dennis Brown. <laughs> Dennis Brown, <laughs> si señor. Dennis Brown was um, the song of African Liberation Day, it's still one of the biggest songs. Uh -huh. uh, it was uh, some sister, Jamaican sister, uh, uh, making songs for Winnie Mandela. I don't remember the names, the sister now, but it was some famous song in that time. Right. Talking, yeah, and a group like, uh, like uh, Barney Spear and hip hop, who was very involved in the hip hop movement. Group like Schooly D, Public Enemy, Africa Islam, uh, all these groups in uh, in the poetry, like uh, um, this brother from uh, they said it uh, was in the Scar Movement. They said he's a member was a member of the Black Panthers in England. Um, I don't remember the name now. It was Jamaican Brothers? It was very poetry important that time. So that was my youth. Then I study. Uh, I went to high school. And then I went to university. We studied journalism, and um, we. Uh, I was always member of the reparation movement in Spain, and I met brother who was who was fighting. We was organized African people, immigrant refugees in terms of Pan African movement. We formed Pan African Federation. Uh, I went to a million men march in Washington. That changed my life. And then, well. I met great people in my, in my life, people like Glenn from GAC in England, uh, Glenn uh, Watson. Mm -hmm. I Glenn people, Watson. Yeah, I meet people like uh, Umtumbasa, Lester Lewis. Mm -hmm. He passed um, days ago and he, he brought me to Zimbabwe to meet, um, to meet uh, Mugabe. I meet people like Sister Esqua, Esther, the real leaders who teach me about reparation. I meet people like Mbandaka, mm -hmm. great, great people, host on Africans who, who galvanize me and my, my life and the, 
the youth of my generation. Uh, Sometimes we don't know that uh, the things we are doing have impact in people who are far. People like uh, Luensi Kinsasa, the leader of the Huru movement in England, uh, the African People's Socialist Party, his wife Patricia, and many, many people who was in struggle. So I understand that the African people, the struggle was not only in Spain, it was around the world. Right. So that was very important to me. And well, uh, what I've come to, the last thing I do, it was my, uh, the works we, we did finally, me and my wife, we found, we found the Malcolm Garvey University, uh, who the, the goal of this institution is to, to keep the legacy of a struggle. First of all, the Pan-African movement in Spain is the organization where I'm involved uh, under the leadership of brother Dr. Bolo Etofili. And, um, and we, we have the necessity to keep the struggle because in, in, uh, in the 90s, we was in Barcelona and we found an organization they call Organización para los Estados Unidos de Africa, uh, Organization for United States of Africa. This organization, it was very uh, connected with um, Marcus Garvey African Philosophy School, Marcus Garvey found in Toronto in Canada. The leader of this organization, he was uh, a mentor, the brother they called um, brother um, Ras Babi from Sudan, mm -hmm. brother Kareba from Senegal, and sister Rufi from Equatorial Guinea. These three people brought to Spain the Marcus Garvey vision and revolutionary doctrine. So it was music and these three brothers. They was because we was, we come from um, uh, Leninist, socialist revolution. So we connect with this brother who was uh, through, through Rastafarian, through Garvey's. And uh, that was in, that was in 90, uh, 97, 97, uh, after a million men mar after a million youth mars with Dr. Kali Muhammad, all these people. So, um, well, what I come to present today is one of the job. Uh, the last one I I met it was this book, is my uh, last book on the um, the 50, 50 years of the women black women struggle and and activism in Spain. Uh, Could you raise it up a little bit more so we can see? Yes, uh, because I don't see myself, so I don't know if you are doing good. We can see you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so uh, this is the, the, you see now? It's good yes. now? Yes, yes. So um, this, this book is, is, la, is one of the investigation we did with uh, the Malcolm Garvey University uh, with the research because um, uh, when, in, when in last year we called uh, the International Conference for, of Marcus Garvey here in Spain uh, in the context of the um, Red, Black and Green uh, Centenary. And this conference, people talk about um, uh, one of the conclusion was to, to write our history because um, one of the things Marcus Garvey did was that he came from of the tradition of a struggle. He didn't invent anything. Marcus Garvey didn't invent anything. Ami Yaz Garvey didn't invent anything. Ami Azwu didn't invent anything. They come from tradition of a struggle, of, uh, of uh, Delany, of uh, Sir Henry Sylvester William, Mackendall, uh, Dandara, Nani, all these people. So what they did, that's what we want to do. We want to take all this struggle happening in the last 50 years in Europe, basically in Spain, in the movement, uh, because you know everywhere you have two movements. You have a Negro movement here in Spain, you have African movement. So everywhere is the same. So Spain is not different. 
So um, the people who are fighting uh, in the Maroons, normally they don't have history. They don't, they don't, uh, they are not in the school, they are not in university, they are not in TV. Thanks, we are in the radio, African cultural radio now, but normally we, here in Spain, they don't give us um, Spain to talk about Garvey. You mm -hmm. know, they talk only about William Dubois. Okay. <laughs> okay. So we, we learned through Garvey that we must build institutions. Mm -hmm. Because when a slave master wants to kill you, you must to, you go to, to the Quilombo. If you don't have Quilombo, where are you going to stay? <laughs> <laughs> so that's, this book is coming to the tradition of the great women and women who, who make the history of Pan-Africans in African liberation. Um, this, this book is um, in this context that we must, you need to, we need to explain our history. And here in Spain, after the Durban conference, you know, I think it's not only in Spain, but in over Europe, mm -hmm. uh, the slave master created what we call African Negroes who go into TV, to go into institution, telling that uh, Marcus Gave is live, you know, they make these kinds of people. And if these people chase the narrative. They begin to talk some narrative of neo-colonial narrative. There was so many sisters you see in internet, you see them talking about uh, black beauty, natural hair, you know, things like that. They despoliticize um, the woman's legacy. They, 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 they despoliticize our experience, the spirit of my mother, the spirit of my aunt, the spirit of my grandmother, you know, all these women who, 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 who like uh, Ami Ashwood, like um, Sister Asatanzinga in London, who wrote this great book about uh, women in the Garvey movement. So, uh, so after that, we see the necessity to respond this uh, attack directly against Africans, uh, um, Africanity. So I investigated with, the, with some brothers and sisters, we started to, to, to tell the history of these women who, who beginning after us, who beginning the struggle, who build the church, who build the march, who build the reparation movement, who build the conference, um, so to do that, I didn't do alone because I was really inspired by all the people. I was inspired by, by many people who I met at the beginning. I told you that I met many people, Sister Kai Mbandaka, Sister Jerry, who Sister Jerry is one of the, of the um, uh, Winnie Mandela Hours Human Rights in Spain, 2010 and Sister Afion. So when I meet all these women in the present, I understand that in the past, it was all, all time was the same. Mm. Not just that the Spanish TV brings some sister talking that his, uh, his, uh, his dress is nice, African people is cool, all this, you know, all these things, uh, they, or people with the attacking Sister Winnie Mandela in radios, in TV. So, they, they want to present Nelson Mandela as the great leaders. At the same time, they, they say that Sister Mandela is wrong. So we, we can let these things because me, myself, I enjoy in this question because my mother was teaching me about Sister Winnie Mandela. Yeah. If he, now I begin to tell stupid things like this, I, I'm wrong. And uh, you know, so I remember when the Sister Winnie Mandela passed, we went to embassy and the embassy didn't prepare anything to honor her. No music, nothing, nothing, no nothing. So we, we yeah. said, but yes. So that's what the time was we begin to understand the need to write our history because mm -hmm. Marcus Gave said that any, con any people who don't know his history, well, in Spanish say, cualquier pueblo que no conoce su historia es como un árbol, Sin raíces. So this was something that uh, we, 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 we started to realize. We started to realize that in, 
And um, this book, beginning in the in the in the century 15, when uh, women's like uh, uh, women's uh, like nanny, because Jamaica was part of a Spanish empire. People don't know that. Uh, mm -hmm. Women's like Dandara in Haiti. Uh, women's they call Maroons women's. Uh, uh, women's like uh, Nzinga. Women's who, who, who promote in the mind of Africans the liberation. So that's why we started this book. At the beginning, we have a context in the contextualization of the origin of the struggle. Okay. You know, what is the tradition when you want to understand the tradition of Sister Afion, the mm -hmm. tradition of Winnie Mandela, the tradition of Maria Makeba, mm -hmm. the tradition of Aminata Omoya. You must go to these people because this is one tradition. All the people have another tradition. We don't, we don't talk about these people. Today we talk about the people, the people in the field. Mm -hmm. right? So this tradition for the field in Spain we have this tradition too. Always was in the tradition. For example, in, we, we spoke the women who in the 20s of this century, they was involved in Spanish civil war. They was involved against slavery because Spain was, was of the emperor who make a slave. Mm. You know, that's why we have 200 African people in Latin America speaking Spanish. Right. They don't learn in the school. <laughs> They're learning through, through plantation, mm. you know? And uh, in, all, in all that place, Colombia, Venezuela, Ecuador, Argentina, Chile, Africa was organized. There was rebellions. There was built cities. There was built um, a state, you know? They built a state in San Basilio de Palenque in Colombia. We built a state in Palmares in Brazil. And we build a state that continues until today, the Haiti Republic. It's a consequence of rebellion of the Africans in Haiti, mm -hmm. the established state. So we, know must, we, we must not forget that because this is what tradition. So in this book, the woman you will see in this book is 500 pages. The woman you will see in this book is the woman who come from this tradition. So, right. So I want, to, I want to point out in the question of, um, of, uh, of impact of Garveyism in the women in Spain. Is the chapter four in the book? Okay. Okay. Um, we, uh, I'm, I'm understand that, you know, Marcus Garvey was in Spain in 1909. Understand? And he was, he, 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 he traveled to Spain when he was a uh, journalist of, um, of uh, African Orient Express. Okay. Okay. And he came to Spain because he wanted to negotiate with Spanish government to get uh, um, uh, permission to travel to Africa. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because Spain was one of the countries who was in the conference in Paris in nine, and one, one nine zero zero. It was the conference to divide Africa. After Berlin conference, they meet in Paris. So Marcus Gave had tried to go to Spain to have some permission to go to Canada Islam after Canada Islam down to Africa. Mm. Okay. So he was journalist. So uh, when well, all this experience, uh, it cannot be outside from what we do today, because today. They call us um, immigrant, refugees. Mm. But yesterday, we was uh, color people. We was slaves. Yes. <laughs> we was free man. So now we said the Sub-Saharian is the new name. <laughs> Sub-Saharian. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> and then they said uh, we are not Sub-Saharian. Now we are Afro-European, <laughs> Afro-British. Afro Spanish. <laughs> and after now, the last one is uh, what we call um, racializados. Oh, gosh. So they okay. want to keep us lost. Yes. Yes. Racializados 
Mm. Uh, you know, uh, it means different comes different names to say Africans or black. Okay. Understand? But they, they use different, and this tend to bring people lost. Mm -hmm. Because because my uh, I remember one of the old women, all white women. It was my neighborhood. One day, this woman Julia, she saw me in the TV. And when I come home night, it tell me, excuse me, Abu. I know, I know what is black man, but what is sub-Saharian? Because <laughs> <laughs> the, the woman understand that we are black. Yes, when, that's it. Yeah, when the media said sub-Saharian, she, she a little bit confused mm. because she didn't study that. She's all women. But she's, she's seeing TV, and the journalist in TV present me, he made me a presentation like sub saharia <laughs> So the woman said, but she's my, she's my neighborhood. I know he's black. Yes. Why now she's sub saharian What's happening here? <laughs> so that's happened in this context. So in this book, what do we do? What I'm doing in this book, in, in this Afrofeminism, 15 years of African women struggling in Spain, first of all, is demonstrate our sister or children and our, our families that uh, we don't come from internet. Our history is not Google. Mm -hmm. Our history is not in, what's this called, this man, uh, the owner of the Google, what's he called, uh, the man oh. who, who made Google, what's the name? Uh, yeah, uh, I can't remember yeah. his name. Yes, uh, all these moment, people. But... So uh, many of the women who come in this book, they never have even WhatsApp mm. because because these women who who don't have even they don't want the, the time of a telephone because because this new um, generation that use technology uh, the, the the slave master bring the narrative between our children mm -hmm. uh, or telling our children that okay I'm a feminist okay I say yes good my sister. I'm a feminist too, but <laughs> you don't. You know Winnie Mandela. The sister said, "No." She said, "What kind of feminist are you? You don't know mm. Winnie Mandela." Mm. My sister, you know Ami Jacks Garvey. She said, "No." You say, "You know Ami Aswood." She said, "No." I said, "What kind of feminist you are?" <laughs> because I'm a feminist. I I agree. I support feminism, but what is what background you have on that? So, <laughs> in this book, we introduce. Uh, or people or children or sister um, to recognize uh, the legacy because we have a legacy. We are not only colonial people, the slave and all these things. We was resistance people and this woman wrote the history. For example, in the chapter that we talk about the impact of um, uh, Garveyism in Spain, basically in the women's. So in these chapters, we talk about women like uh, um, uh, uh, um, Elena de Cespedes. Elena de Cespedes was, um, was the first woman in Spain to declare, to declare themselves three women and married with other women. 300 years ago in Spain. Before nobody talk about all these questions they're talking now. Uh, we have people like Salaria Kea, is the woman who, who, was fight, who was fighting during the Spanish Civil War. She making a hospital, defend the people. We have a woman like Imelda Macaulay. Imelda Macaulay, it was the first woman to, to to, to start the Spanish government to have the same right that the uh, uh, white, uh, um, um, I don't know what it's in English, um, uh, the white press, the press woman, what is yeah. in English, press woman? The woman press who, with journalists? No, um, you know, you have a pastor in Catholic. Oh, priest, the priestess. Yeah, the princess women. Okay. Okay. Yeah. He was the first to organize a black woman in this context okay. in 1928. 
So it, it was part of a national uh, leadership of the organization. So this is a, a Sister Rufi, she appeared in the book, in the book, and she, in, she grew up in Spain, and, uh, and she introduced from Malcolm X, and they was bringing uh, Marcus Garvey. If you can put another pictures, I can explain you more woman that. Okay, this sister uh, is another one. This is Sister Tutumu. Uh, she, she born in Equatorial Guinea. Uh, um, she grew up in the, in the context of colony. So he, he, know, he know the process of the 50s, 60s, and 70s, you uh -huh. know? So they, they, was, they, they was fighting, the, the beginning of the fighting against racism in Spain. The people who organized in seventies and in sixties, you know, in uh, in 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 Spain, his history is it's important history because he know he spoke in the book about what's happened with her when the Equatorial Guinea uh, access to independence because Equatorial Guinea access to independence in October the twelfth, nineteen sixty eight, and. And uh, she was a uh, 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 part of uh, uh, Spanish, you understand? So mm -hmm. she explained that. Okay, another another pictures. Okay, this this woman uh, is 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 a brilliant woman, very brilliant woman. This woman is one of the women who found the most important magazine in Spain. You know, uh, and the magazines they call Africa Negra. You know. Uh, the woman of, 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 of this woman is uh, Cardoso. You know, she's originally, uh, his background is from Angola. And she, um, she come to Spain as a student in the late 70s, late A in, in the middle of the late 70s. And then she's finished study and she was always buying uh, both um, newspaper magazine in England or in France, because we don't, there is not a black or African magazine in Spain that time. So the sister um, uh, organized and built the news, the magazine they call Africa Negra. You know, Africa Negra was the first, one of the beginning of magazine, Pan-African magazine. Not that magazine was the Africans come with this kind of narrative, like missionaries, like uh, colonial vision, you know, the poor women, uh, you know, things like this. No, there was something different. You know, it was the magazine was I, I read when I was youth, and this woman, one of the, the, the women who make this, uh, he's, still, he's still working in the media. She's still making book. Okay. Uh, yeah, but that, as a consequence of the, of the, that these women, there was, there was garbage that had not visibility in the mainstream media. You understand? Mm -hmm. Okay, let's go another picture if you have more. Okay, these pictures is historical pictures. This picture is the the the, the national the the end of the of the uh, of the first first uh, first Pan African conference, the first conference of the Pan African movement. We held this conference in Barcelona. Then uh, we we give a strong uh, uh, decision to work for reparation, and uh, and you we have um, uh, from 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 uh, right from right to to left uh, we have um, Sister Sonia Rodriguez. He's uh, he's not looking us. She's looking uh, talk with the brother from uh, from UK. Okay. Them, from the African, uh, all African people revolutionary party was a delegation we invited to this conference. I, can, I think it's a brother Atienda. I don't, I don't know Atienda. It was the Jamaican brothers who come to, to, to delegation. I know the, the red one is another big woman, big sister Suble in the, in the, uh, in, in the national movement that uh, is, is, it was Sister Fatu, Sister Fatu Seka. Uh, the sister, Fat, sister Fatu Seka is from Gambia. She was a grassroots activist during a long time in Barcelona, in Catalonia, and in Spain. Uh, the, the other one is the sister Dooti de Sil. Uh, Dooti de Sil is, an, 
is one of the uh, sister who, who come uh, out from um, uh, New York to part of international delegation to attend to the conference to to uh, um, uh, salutation. And he, she's working on the reparation and uh, the symbol of a slave in the Spanish street. She's doing research on all these uh, symbol, estatua, or he has. Another sister is Sister Maria, who is another activist too in the movement. And another one is Sister Marta, Marta Trujillo. Marta Trujillo is one of the sister who, who, who impacted the struggle for reparation in Spain. She was one of the sister who uh, went with the delegation to the parliament, uh, the delegation were ahead to the parliament to call reparations and he was with me. And the sister is from Santo Domingo and he organized the Santo Domingo community. And we, we make march demonstration in many struggles, mostly when the brother, uh, brother Ali was killed by police. And we, uh, uh, we walk to, for a for long time together. Um, and the, the last one is a professor. It's a sister professor from, from, from uh, Hawaii University and is one of the delegation to come to the conference. So this picture is one of his uh, uh, historical pictures of the, uh, the close of the, of the National Congress that uh, the, the, uh, the organization took very clear, very important decision at national level. Yes, uh, we can pass some of the pictures I have there. Yeah, okay, this is, uh, this is um, uh, a sister who fight for the right of a champion, fighting for the right of immigrant. A fight for the right of immigrants. She made many a strike in the church. She was uh, um, the sister is originally from Ecuador, you know, and um, and she uh, see his husband uh, organized a movement they call uh, Papeles para Todos, document for everybody. You mm -hmm. understand? Mm -hmm. Because it was it was thousand, you know, thousands of refugees, immigrant, and uh, and um, she uh, she in, she called a big strike in the one of the cathedral of Barcelona, uh, one of the big big church uh, for more than one month. The strike was in the media, uh, famous people come there, and finally they win because the, because the government have to negotiate with the sister and give document to, to, to these people, you understand? Mm -hmm. So, uh, um, and uh, she is a great, great, one of the important sister in the struggle for, for African people at, uh, in the tradition of uh, Ami Aswood or, or female uh, Negroes, uh, another one. Okay, okay, this is, uh, this is, this is the mother of one of my friends that we was we was militant of the New Black Panther Party. Uh, his number is Victoria Ojilo. Victoria Ojilo, he he started in he started working in the uh, health in the hospital thing like this, and then he organized organization of the mothers against the drugs in eighties, and he involved he was involved too in Maleva, the cultural organization, social organization for African people. And, and she enjoys in the movement for liberation from Equatorial Guinea, Molifuge. And after in, 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 in 2001, she was part of a, a popul, um, popular party, a, 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 a progress party. The progress party is, is, the, is the political party who fight against the dictatorship in Obiang in Guinea. And this woman is part of the, the, the leader of this organization, of, uh, of this organization. She, she, she um, in, involved in many activities in 90s. And one of the, his children, Miguel Ebanga, he was my comrade in the New Black Panther Party. And he, uh, Miguel, Miguel was attacking by street Nazis and he went to hospital. So his mother is one of the great women that I admire 
in in those uh, in, in 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 this context. Even even now, she's still in, in implicating politician for his country. Excellent. Okay, okay. This is uh, the sister I talked before. Is uh, I told you before at the beginning when uh, we see the pictures. Okay. Great. Yes, is the sister I talked him before. Uh, uh, Fatu Seka. This is uh -huh. sister Fatu Seka. Yeah, he is is fighting against the oblation genital. Uh, in in she is involved in in many many anti fascist anti racist activists and um, uh, the difference with the, these women that I I bring in my book is that many of these women they subordinate to the organic organical process like the UNI mm -hmm. we don't have hip hop star we have people in the organization. So right. this is very important because here in Spain, you will have many hip hop stars, many people in TV, Facebook, you know, media. But when the community have problem, you don't want to see them in any meeting. Understand? Yes. You will see people in uh, just Floyd meeting, speaking in TV. But when the situation in the community that, uh, for example, Police kill uh, brother uh, Liu. Police kill brother Moore. They kill um, um, many other brothers. And when you have these kind of actions, all these people you see in TV, you see in media, you see them in Facebook. You don't want to see them. Mm. You don't want to see them. So, so these women, they make action, they make activity, but they are part of the, they are part of organization. They have community. Conscience. So okay. that's what Marcus Gave said. Black first. That right. mean that or African fundamentalism. That, that's what it mean. That's true. Okay. okay. This is this sister is sister that uh, they call Celia Emba, Maria Celia Emba. Maria Celia Emba was member of the New Black Panther Party. Was member of the African organization Youth Front. Um. Uh, she suffers um, the, 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 the attack of the patriarchy. Uh, the sister married and uh, his, uh, his husband uh, um, begin to make in, um, the, um, I don't say, what's say in English, maltrato. <laughs> I don't know what to say. Begin to make trouble with the sister. Uh, the sister won't separate and the sister take the children and the sister ran away for this man. And uh, the, the, the judge, the government, okay. condemned, condemned the sister to, to, to stay in the jail um, during uh, one year because the sister condemned the jail, the, the, the jail, or the government condemned the sister to kidnap their own children. Look that. Okay. And this happened too much in Spain with African women. The government, kidnap the women, the, the kids of African women, and nothing mm -hmm. happened. So that's why you, you see many people talking in internet, but they never talk about this question because uh, the women, those, some sisters going to buy food, five minutes when he can, the neighborhood, the white neighborhood called police said the kid is alone, the, the government take you the kids, they put in, in, in the, in the um, youth, um, youth prison. Mm -hmm. You understand? Yeah. So that's why it's the struggle that we make with sister during during one year. The sister was in jail the for taking them. back her own children. Yeah, because the sister we we didn't give the sister didn't give the children. The African community keep the mm -hmm. children, mm -hmm. and the government said that until the children is not with them, she will remain in jail. Wow. Yeah, she was one year in jail. This not happened with any white woman. Only with African women. Mm. Okay, so the sister begin be begin this is look like symbol, the symbol of the African women resistance. Mm -hmm. And many people begin to talk about this situation because this happened here with Senegalese women, Gambian women, Dominican women, all black women have this problem. But these women we have in, in the office, black women in the political parties, in the hip hop star, Beyonce, all these people. They never talk about that. Mm. 
you know, they, you know, you don't, they talk about, yes, rice is same, uh, we want visibility, but they don't tell you that uh, women in, in, in Murcia and Almeria and Sevilla, uh, government kidnapped their, the kids, it was happened. Mm. So those kids grow up in the, in the youth prison. Yeah. Unfortunately, the kid of the sister, uh, the sister Celia, one study medicine, they went to study school, but majority of the sisters of the kids, they grow up in these uh, um, uh, delinquential universities because you make master, you make uh, uh, your PhD in this, in this place, how to, 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 to the link, you know? And so we have this problem and the sister begin, one of the heroes, women, who fighting against this question? You mm -hmm. know, the sister passed last uh, December. Last December, you know, the last December, sister passed last December, and okay. we, in the Pan African movement, we are not this sister too much. We love her too much. We grow up in the same neighborhood when we was kids, and he see a part. He appear in the book because she was the first woman. He said the government, I don't gonna give you my kids. I prefer to stay in the jail. Okay. So that's that is uh, one of the symbol of the sister and his the his sister um what uh, what they call um sister uh, Marie uh, Luz. It was okay. the, she was the president of the African organization Youth Front. You know. Right. So the so the sister come for the tradition of a struggle. So, so the sister was resistant in, in, in mm -hmm. today, uh, when she passed, she have a grandchildren, but uh, his, his history is, 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 is silenced by the mainstream black yes. so-called intellectual or blah, blah, you know, all these people, mm -hmm. they silence this kind of history. And I put it in the book and um, because, um, is she represented of the African resistance because this came into the history of the slavery. During the slavery, during the colonization, they was doing the same with the with African women. It's not right. nothing new. Yeah. So there's nothing new. Okay. Next slide. So we know this one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this, this is Sister Sani. Sister Sani mm -hmm. is the number one in radio. So he inspired me too much and when I write the, the, the conclusion of the book, because the book has um, 600 pages. So I made conclusion in the last, I have one, one, uh, one chapter talking about the women in the media. Uh -huh. So uh, African women appear in the media how? Like, uh, you know, always I told you about the films, Django. Is one part of the films when um, the Mandingos is fighting in a house, and one of the Mandingo kill only the one. Mm. And, uh, and, and that time, uh, Jamie Foxx was drinking in the bar, was drinking um, with oxygen drink. And some sister come next to the bar and ask, ask, uh, the, ask the barman tell the sister, what do you want to drink? The sister said, I want to drink champagne from French, uh, something like this. So sophisticated. So that gave me the idea that always all people was in the top level to understand consumism. Okay? The consumism yeah. is part of a, of a it's, like, it's like cocaine, it's like drug, it's like so what's what is the what is the deal of the women, black women in the media? So we try to analyze that because it's very important. How or white supremacy protect black women in the media, and how black women or African protect themselves in the media? You know, mm -hmm. and Sister Sanis um, is one of the women who every Sunday. Uh, inspirate many people and inspirate many women here who, who, who you know, in, 
we have uh, the three traditional, two tradition of the colonization, Spanish, Portuguese, and French colonization, English and Germanic colonization. English and Germany, they call indirect rule. And Spanish and Portuguese and French, they call direct rule. So those direct rule we call today interculturalidad. And English and Germany we call multiculturalidad. Understand? So it's two kind of, uh, Bomale talk about indirect rule. And Felakuti say indirect rule, direct rule, the same rule because it's colonial. So in, in, the, in the Latin tradition, in Spanish tradition, don't remember that, uh, don't forget that we are 200 African millions who speak Spanish, mm. more than English, more than French. Um, and how you can keep 200 million under the oppression, under the colonialization, is because you control the images because we didn't have church. Uh, Africans in English speaking, they have a church. That's why they build Rastafarians. But we in the Latin way, we must go to the church, the, the, the church of the slave master. And we are still back. We are back in the church. Yeah. And, we, and we must pray the white church and we must go with the people who the people who who oppress me. I must go with him in the same church and, and do the same thing. So that's bring one tradition that uh, that uh, in Latin tradition you are not black, you are not Africans because you confuse negritude, blackness with pigmentocracy, something different. But in Latin way. You are black if you are dark. If you are not dark, for example, Sister Sanis in Santo Domingo is not African, it's not black. They say Rubio Claro, Morena, Morena Clara, Trigueña. Many different concepts to not say black or African. So that's why the media in a Latin way, all the women you have in the media must be first of all light skin, mm. first of all, and then must to talk in the way that slave master don't fear. Mm -hmm. You know, they must to show that they agree with the oppression. They are um, they are happiness. They must to laugh. We say in Spanish, uh, sonrisa compulsiva. People who laugh every day. By nothing, understand. Mm -hmm. So this is part of what they teach you in the school, in the um, in the university, in the college, when they will teach you journalism, they teach you to be that because you are black. So, but so when you the black people who didn't they didn't receive African tradition of a struggle in his home, when they arrive to the university, they act they act like any slave. Mm. It's normal because they are, they know, many people, many sisters discover with 45 years, with three children in a school that they are Africans. So when you, when that's happening in you, all your life, you was acting under what the slave master tell you to do. So in the media, in, in countries like Colombia, Ecuador, Venezuela, Argentina, Chile, Santo Domingo, Cuba, the women that you see in the media is the women that try to be white. Mm. But no, you cannot see never women that um, they, they, are, they are outside of this image. You understand? So that's happening in Spain. And Portugal and all that in place here in Spain is the same. If you come to Spain, you put TV, you will see some sisters that um, they are very happy, they are very, you know, and, and those sisters don't do that because white man tell him that you must be happy because it's part of the natural realization during, during 100 years, uh, 
the slave master was portrayed as like this. So mm. when Sister Sanis came into the radio and, and we translate to Spanish what the Sister Sanis said, so many sisters that they went to school, they was in campus with me, said they like Beyonce, but no Sister Sanis. <laughs> Understand? Because, uh, because oh, oh, when the same happened with Winnie Mandela, because all this vision of um, patriarchy, you know, what is vision of patriarchy? Because colonial colonialization bring patriarchy to Africa, exploit patriarchy. So Winnie Mandela must to be a women, submission women. She must not talk, she must not be leadership, she must not be beautiful, she must be quiet. Mm. That is a good woman for them. That's why yeah. you see that they brought Mandela a new wife. Yeah. That's the that's decision is not taken by Mandela. It's taken by the White House, all the place said, no, this man needs to know the kind of woman. This woman is dangerous. She talked too much. Mm. Somebody got must to silent her. You know, all these things that you see, that's what they see. Mm. When, the, when the Spanish government <laughs> take out visa from Sister Winnie Mandela in Spain, Canadian government do the same, French government do the same, mm. Cameroon government do the same, because all these people, they say that she's an enemy. That you might, so that is coming for history. So I think, okay, this is another sister, beautiful sister. She has a radio. She has a, is the owner of the radio. Is the first black woman to have a radio in his property. He built a radio. Gloria, his name is Gloria. She lives in the south of Spain. She, she was the leader of the organization they call uh, Mujeres del Mundo, Women of the War. You know, see, see another woman, she built this uh, radio, she's a journalist, she come to Spain as a student uh, of journalists and she's a writer, she was fighting a long time for the rape of the, of the women, of the black women, and she's still doing. Her name is Gloria, Gloria Chewekin. She's originally, uh, his um, background is from Nigeria, uh, uh, Yoruba. Okay, that's the, is it? Is it? No, it's not. It's the last one. Yeah, okay. This is very important women in my life because it's my mother. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. You included yeah. your mother. That's beautiful. <laughs> yeah, this is my mother. This is uh, uh, Dr. Basilisa Mangamon Fubay. She, uh, she was, um, uh, uh, he's a uh, part of a trade they call a Sasom. She born in Equatorial Guinea. And uh, she was a uh, she was um, a teacher, and um, she's the, the the woman who who, who showed me to understand the the difference between house Negro and field Negro. I didn't learn that in school. I didn't learn that in any Facebook and any school for the colonial uh, because. Um, uh, my mom was uh, um, uh, um, made me to read um, the book of uh, Kwame Nkrumah uh, when I was uh, 16 years. Uh, and at the same time, it was in me, I understand that uh, black people cannot talk or do work against their own community. For instance, uh, the language we use to talk my mom was very, um, very uh, radical in the question of the language you use to describe things. You must to be appropriate to speak. If you want to say something, the things must to be clear. So impose us to me and my brothers to use dictionary. <laughs> so you must to use dictionary to know what you are telling. So when African people use words like um, uh, vernaculo, it's in English vernacular, I, don't know, I think it's in Spanish vernaculo, to, 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 to portray their own language. For example, African language, English, Spanish, French is a language. All of what we talk in Africa is dialecto, understand? 
So mm -hmm. when the African said, I want to speak in vernacular language, vernaculars mean savage, jungle, people who live in, um, in uncivilized people. So all these things, and even the films, uh, the films Kunta Kinte, films like uh, Roots. So my mother per permit me to understand what's happened on these things, just you know, how uh, Tarzan, films like Tarzan, when Tarzan killed Africans, you cannot clap because you are Africans, like these people are killing. Mm -hmm. So all these things I learned of my mother. So, and he, he's, uh, she was, uh, she's one of the people who built uh, the uh, Free Mandela movement. She was part of the church, the African theology of uh, the principles of the uh, coin. This man, the called coin, uh, who, who wrote the book, The Principles of African Liberation Theology. So, um, at the same time, uh, this, uh, this uh, my mother was against integration. So maybe today you can you cannot say you can you can it's not possible to say that in, in Spain in, in media and TV that the black man said uh, so for example tomorrow the media say we said that is again integration. It's like something that you cannot say. But in 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 Aries, many people, mostly people from um, uh, Equatorial Guinea, we was against integration because we was we was part of a Spain colony. So when Spain want to integrate us, what does it mean? Mm -hmm. They want to recolonize us. They don't want to integrate us. So mm -hmm. let's talk through. You understand? So. My mom, my mom teach me to be against integration. You understand what integration means. So uh, me and my brothers, my sisters, we was, um, we was clear. And other women who, who was leaking with my mom is my aunt, they call Vicenta Boro. Vicenta Boro is my, my father's sister. And she's one of the women who, 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 who teach me the um, the difference between uh, the Negro in the school and the Negro who really fight. What's the difference between Marcus Garvey and William Dubois? I understand this problem, listen my aunt. I didn't understand this contradiction in school. Never, my aunt always tell, tell us that to, when, when skinhead Nazis come to attack African community, what is the student, what is African student who always are in the campus? So the people who was defending African community was brothers in the blocks, brother who never study, brother who don't know, don't have, in, don't, have uh, don't know too much, don't have PhD, they, they don't have a uh, master's, they don't have anything, but there was loyalty to the to the direction of the Fen African community. When sister um, sister was killed, uh, uh, Lucrecia Perez, who was shot by police, who was killed. The brother who came to defend the, the the building, the office of the New Black Panther Party, was those brothers. The brothers that we see talking too much. Hey, you know, Abuye, uh, this must be the. We don't see them. So my my aunt make me to understand this question. Okay, this is Sister, uh, sister Maaba Rufi. This is this picture we took in Barcelona. Me and the sister, I spoke, uh, the, the first sister we spoke in the beginning. This is Sister Rufi. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, this, this woman, this woman is another great woman. This woman was the first woman who denounced the Spanish government until but, but the racism in the European court. Okay, the sister passed 25 years fighting against Spanish government in the court. Mm. So they destroy his life, his husband, his family, you know, you know, 
um, the sister was in 1992 when the Olympic Games in Spain, uh, Spanish government made many law to, to control the people, mostly black people because they have people to come to the Barcelona Olympic Games. They won't give good image. They don't want many Negroes in the street because this is bad image for them. They don't want many black people. So they want, so one day the sister went in the train with his husband and his, his, um, his son. And the, the, um, the police asked ask the sister document. The sister said, okay, why you ask me document? The rest of the people in the train, the white people, why you ask them? Say, no, I ask you, okay. They went to, they went to the um, police station and, uh, and um, his husband was a white man, but they don't tell him that the sister denounced the government by racism. So Spanish government uh, condemned the sister and the sister went to European court. During 25 years, the sister was in the European court and as a consequence of this, this, this uh, resolution of European court, the legislation in Spain begin to change. You understand? It was this woman, no was NGOs, all these white NGOs you see taking money, talking about uh, racism. No, it was these women, women like this who do that. And, um, and uh, nobody remember her in Spain. Nobody talk about her in Spain. And, um, and uh, the sister suffered too much because um, the sister born in the US and his, his, his father was part of a Martin Luther King. He was his grandfather fighting against Ku Klux Klan. When the sister came to Spain and she began to fight, people don't understand you because you come to the colonial mentality, people who are in, in colonial mentality. So the sister make a, a, a great contribution to the, um, to the change of the legislation um, to condemn Spain at the, uh, at the level, at the high level, and uh, she, she spent all his life. You know, uh, you, you have a husband, you have a family. Who's, what's, who, what's man? What man can support that 25 years? Mm. Understand? So, so that is, uh, okay, this is Sister Winnie Mandela, <laughs> one of the reference in, in my life. And she's the, um, uh, the woman, so the people who lead her, who more I learned in the struggle, and he was the terminate in the, um, in, in, um, Defeat upper head in solitary, and she was uh, the leader commander of the struggle in uh, in African war, not only in Africa, African war. Because many women around the world, in many people around the world, we enjoy to support winning, uh, support the free of Nelson Mandela. We did it because we see winning. Winning was. We, we, we know Winnie. We didn't know Mandela face. We know he's in jail. We know he's uh, important people, but the people saw Winnie in TV in front of his, his house in Soweto. Uh, the police brutalized them. And Winnie was the image of resistance of the African liberation. Winnie is in the tradition of people like Marcus Garvey, like Malcolm X, like Kwame Nkrumah. In the future, in the future, people will recognize uh, what kind of a uh, uh, great person Winnie has, not only in the aspect of political. Let's go to intellectual way. Winnie has more than six books writing my hair. She has a PhD. She wants to study. She, 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 she born children. She has great children. And she was people who follow. One of the children, political children of Winnie Mandela, is Brother Malema in South Africa now. If you want, if you don't know what was Winnie Mandela in 80s, see Brother Malema. You will see who is his political mother. So we, we must to, to, to re, re, rebuild Africans' history. When we talk Winnie Mandela, we talk uh, uh, Ami Aswood. 
this mm -hmm. this kind of people who are in the African history, but uh, or or education system or education system is still controlled by colonialism. That's why Winnie Mandela or Amy Aswood never appear. In my book, I dedicate Winnie Mandela two chapters. I dedicate Amy Aswood one chapter and other army another chapter because you can you can not understand this century this history of african liberation if you understand these three women i told you um and uh, sister winnie mandela is an influence everywhere you go everywhere rappers mm -hmm. musicians uh reggae uh, calypso um and makosa any anything you go and but what happened we have two, 200 african million speaking spanish no book in spain is pub is public uh, book of winnie mandela is public why because the 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 symbol what told you women's in the media is still the same thing they still keeping that emergence that uh, Winnie uh, must not be in, in, in public action, but she was the woman that made this history when the women, uh, Nelson Mandela never, never was taught to write physically. Winnie was taught to write. Mm -hmm. What Jenny was taught to write with electrodos, electric torturers. Winnie uh, in his house with two children, it was destroyed by a bulldozer. And people of uh, Winnie was killing his bodyguard, people of organization. And, um, and what kind of uh, uh, this patriarchy, uh, speeches, campaigns to destroy Sister Winnie, to talk about his personal feeling, his personal relationship with Nelson Mandela. And if he, if he, with, if he is a man who is outside in the women is in jail, maybe Nelson Mandela will marry at six, seven women. Mm. And no, that nobody could say anything. But but after even that, Winnie was still in support. His husband is too. And what Winnie represent for the mass of the people, for the for the for the um, popular people. Yeah. Popular people see Winnie as the leader of the reference of the African liberation. So I don't I don't care about that. Was the Syrian <laughs> said was the Fox News or El País or all this TV or tell, tell us in the, or in the school, we must to keep um, the legacy because they want to control a narrative of African people about what kind of women we must to, fo we must to follow. Mm, they say we must it. to follow Michelle Obama. That one they want to tell you, no Winnie Mandela. Mm, okay? Yeah. So, so any Africans, any Africans who want to understand how apartheid was the fact, they can not understand that if you don't understand who is Winnie Mandela. They said that Winnie Mandela was terrorist. Apartheid system was a terrorist system. Mm -hmm. When Sister Winnie Mandela organized army group, she did that in the same way that as uh, Zinga do the army group in Angola to defeat slavery again you know, Dutch, you know, the people. Because uh, uh, apartheid was killing people, was killing uh, people like uh, um, uh, uh, all these uh, leaders, uh, Steve Biko, they killed many of people they was, they was killing. Mm -hmm. you know, so what Winnie Mandela must to do as a leader of the movement, defend their people, Organize army group, organize defend the people. But when apartheid finished, those people who were terrorists became innocent, and they took Sister Winnie Mandela. They portrayed like criminal. And Mandela, he is a president. He said, "Okay, so that is some part of African history that we never talk. But one day." One day we will talk about this question in Sister Winnie Mandela. We will get uh, uh, the history. We will talk about this. This great, great, great women in the in all of the history. There is no one. There is no one 
you know, there is not, um, there is not one. All these sisters you see in the school, the university, they have a PhD, the blah, 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 blah. Never, no one of them arrived the level of winning because when the, the Bible said that uh, how much enemy you have, that is the level of people you are. I don't know if you are saying it good in English, yeah. but in, in Spanish, they said uh, things like this. They said, la cantidad de enemigos que tienes, dice la talla de persona que eres. So the sister have enemy in own house, in own, in the, all over the world. All over the world they have the enemy. Even that, even that, if you understand uh, Durban conference, Mandela at the beginning didn't want to do Durban conference. It was it was winning and the women leaked and the use of the ANC that they said that the Durban conference must be on reparation. Uh -huh. That's 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 happened. I remember that. Mm -hmm. That was something that they said that, but people don't we don't forget because the, the first conference was in Nigeria, in Abuja with Abiola, and they never talk about reparation. So we told the tell Mandela must to talk. It was Winnie. It was it was the force of Winnie inside the the the, the party. And it was Winnie talk about the okay, we have democracy, but what about poor people? Uh -huh. People is poor in South Africa. What white people has still has them 87% of the land, still has them all the resource, and what happened? So when you see Hollywood, you know, glorificate Mandela. Make yeah, films, but not really. Yeah, make films, stupid films like uh, Invictus. We're gonna have so, to move quickly on now. Okay, okay, sister, okay. This is another, another uh, sister they call Trinidad Morgade. She was a great intellectual. She was doctor, professor, and um, it was one of the first black woman to be in the Spanish Academy of Language. So, and she's, um, she's uh, one of the uh, teacher on other great people, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, okay, she's Trinidad Morgades. She passed to, uh, I think one year or two years ago. Okay. Yeah. Is your this book. Is, this is the cover of the Oops, book. Sorry, let me do, we'll okay. go back to the book. Okay, quick. Um, this is um, the, okay. This is the cover of the book. Was the title in Spanish? Uh, my name is the, my editor Maria, who who is one of the see this um, this. Uh, Okay, the pictures, we well, see vision, the pictures, and uh, this is the cover of the book. So you, um, we hope to make one tra translation in English in the next edition, uh, in, but uh, this is the cover. Okay, let's go big because we don't- Okay, we yes, the title. Yeah. Okay, this is, um, this is, my, this is um, Sister Pepe. Sister Pepe is my own too. She's coming for a struggle in the, in the church. You know, she's a um, woman who organized another the women. She was teacher. She was organized under the women, the teacher. But be before she became teacher, she was, uh, you, I don't know what the name you said, uh, the pastor woman, what they call in the Catholic uh, mm -hmm. nurse, what they call? The nurse, no? Priest. Priestess. The priest. Okay. Yeah. She was priest. Priestess. Know? Priestess. What? Priestess. Pri yes. Priestess. Okay. She was priestess. Um, she, um, she left the priestess. She organized in, inside the church uh, to help poor people, organize poor people. And um, uh, his, his fathers and other people in his family was part of a, a liberation movement for Equatorial Guinea and Spanish colony. And then the sister, uh, she lived now in Germany. She was uh, um, part of a struggle of organized women in the church, black women to organize in, in preparation, 
march, uh, immigration, the Fennec immigration, meetings organized, because sometimes we, we have a big meetings, but we don't know who's, who's behind organized this meeting the mm -hmm. day before, you know? And those people who, who quarrel uh, in, and uh, bring in the people because, for example, you make national uh, convention of, of, of Pan-African movement. People come all, all over Spain. Somebody organized that. In, um, in, uh, in the people who organize that, to, people need to food, sleep, blah, blah, blah. And These kind of people who are really uh, uh, work in, 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 in this There's tradition. people that are behind the scenes. Yeah. This sister is a beautiful sister, uh, Sister Lydia. Lydia, she lives in London. Uh, she was one of the, she was one of the secretary of uh, social affairs at the uh, African Uni organization uh, Youth Front. And then he, he was a member of the Organization Estados Unidos de Africa in Barcelona. And she was one of the, uh, she was one of the uh, his leadership to social actions with uh, refugees who come from Ghana, mm -hmm. from Congo. You remember the, the Congo War, the civil war in, in Sierra Leona, all these things. The sister was one of the, uh, she born in Spain. Uh, the, the history of the family of the sister is very connected with Marcus Garvey because the, the family come from, from uh, uh, Jamaica, Jamaica to Liberia, Sierra Leona, and from them, they come to Equatorial Guinea. Um, wow. Yes, uh, Sister Lydia uh, is a beautiful, lovely sister. He made a new history in this contribution of a struggle with um, in the Pan-African movement in, in Barcelona uh, during uh, uh, 1997, uh, 2003. Okay, this is Sister, uh, this is Marta Trujillo. I spoke before, I spoke from her. This picture is the picture we take to- That make with the other sisters, yeah? Yeah, election okay. campaign. Yes, Sister Marta. Okay, okay. This sister lives in England too. This is a beautiful sister. And um, she was activist, she was a student leadership activist in 70s in Spain. She, um, uh, she helped to bring many organizations like Association Cultural Bubi, uh, like on many other organizations in, in during the 80s, during, during, during the 80s, during the 70s, and she studied, she, she studied law. And uh, in this context, he was inside of a struggle for freedom in Spain, not only the black people against uh, Franco's dictatorship um, regime. And, uh, and uh, she's involved in, in many of the groups that like still now, she was one of the women who, who build and promote and give uh, ideological substance and, 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 and all this group. Yeah, this is uh, uh, the, one of the leader of the movement in the South. Uh, it's a sister originally from Senegal. His name is, is um, uh, Mbose, Sister Mbose, Mbose Ndiaye. Mbose Ndiaye is, um, is a leader of the, of the, of the Pan-African movement in Murcia. She, she impressed me too much because when his, his, his child was one, two years, she used coming to the meeting with the child. And many of these meeting was national meeting was about, uh, uh, 700 kilometers, like mm -hmm. from Murcia to, to Asturias, Oviedo in the north. She was wow. bringing his son, Mohammed. So and yes. Mohammed now is, is a big leader in the youth movement. So his mother was bringing here and he was one of the organized uh, groups to the organized buses to go to the meeting, wow. you know, to, to organize. Okay, this is a... Um, Clara Castillo is a, is a, this sister is part of a, a, is a spiritual struggle for African people 
uh, the sister hours of organized, the, com the peace conference uh, in Colombia and the denounce the, the genocide against African people in Colombia and see work in the organization linked to the Fundación Vida Grupo Ecologico Verde. And uh, she is one of the women who, who brought us the question of the black theology inside politician because he's making campaign, the Pope must apologize African people for slavery. Mm -hmm. You know, this is what the yeah. context the sister began, began part of a movement and she began walk. You know, he's a beautiful uh, sister in the movement and she is doing that, that job that the, the, this, this Pope must apologize uh, African people like he did with Jews, like he did with uh, um, homosexual, like he did with many other people. That must apologize us because uh, church, Catholic church, but church in general was complicity in the colonial slavery in apartheid. So he's worked for reparation. That's good, that's good. Okay, sister, this sister, Maripaz Lola Sorizo, beautiful sister. And this sister, she, she learned Japanese in the street. She was working in, yeah, she was working in, um, in, uh, in telephone, public telephone. So in many Japanese was going there. So she's one of the sister who, who, who was building the many biggest organization like uh, Association Cultural Movie, like uh, a movement for against uh, dictatorship in Africa for freedom, for many activists like this. He, 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 buy, he, he buy a home and many refugees people come to him. They don't have place to stay. Uh, they passed in Madrid, they was living there. She was a uh, woman who at the, at the same time at intellectual level, she play a great role to, to, to meet with women from, from other African women, Senegal, Mali, uh, other place. 